Welcome to Brewing TV, I'm Jake Keeler. As many of you know, BTV was in San Diego last month for the National Home Brewers Conference. Before the conference, we took a day trip north to Escondido to visit Stone Brewing Company. While Dawson and our boy Trey spent the time schmoozing and boozing in Stone's World Bistro, Chip and I joined a group of home brewers for a brewery tour. Then we strolled to the gardens with brewmaster Mitch Steele. So if you think you're worthy, grab a pint and come along with us to Stone Brewing Company. Let's go see the beer factory. My name's Ken. Uh, the weather's beautiful. Uh, you're in San Diego, so the last thing I want to do is bore you with an infomercial. Without further ado, we'll head on out right this way. Stone Brewing Company has been turning out beer with bold flavors and an attitude to match since 1996. Founders Greg Cook and Steve Wagner have built a company known for its in-your-face brands, gargoyle-loaded packaging, and savvy social media skills. Over the last um, 15 years now that we've been in existence, uh, we have been actually the fastest growing brewery in the United States on a year-over-year -year annual percentage growth basis. And I think perhaps one of the interesting things about that is that we have never advertised, which is not terribly unusual for small breweries. We also quickly developed a reputation, I think deserved the reputation that we earned for ourselves, of, of brewing bigger, bolder, um, stronger, more unique styles of beer than were commonly available. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And I've just said to myself, I want to be a part of the solution. And I'll get a little feisty and, and dare I say, you know, outright angry um, from time to time about this. Because um, I think it's insulting. I, you know, I go into, you know, I see some of the things that are on the shelves and I'm insulted by it. Uh, we've got a spray ball array, we've got scrubbers, we've got all kinds of stuff in there. So the days of, you know, crawling into each tank after each brew are over. That way we can literally have three batches going at the same time. Mitch Steele joined the team in 2006. His brewing experience includes everything from small brew pubs to macro brewing at Anheuser-Busch. Obviously it's, it's great. I mean, it's, you know, um, you know, I came from an environment where, where the beers that we brewed at Anheuser-Busch were very much marketing driven, you know, and, and very much competitive. You know, we wouldn't break any new ground. It was more along the lines of, well, this beer is becoming very popular, we need to brew something like it. And, and the marketing people would tell the brewing department what they wanted, and then we would go out and brew something. Here it's more about what can we create that's unique or new or just really delicious. And I give Greg and Steve a lot of credit in giving our team the flexibility and, and, and the ability to, to do that. Brewers like to create. So, you know, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get our other team members, our other brewers to, to be as creative, you know, and to do some of these things. And some of these beers may make it out the door and some of them may not, but, you know, at least they have the satisfaction of, of having tried something and, and exercising the creative muscle. I think right. it's real important for most brewers to be able to do that. Some of the best breweries that seem to be making the more extreme or more flavorful, flavorful beers, the brewers actually have a, a background that would suggest more restraint. <laughs> Almost like, you know, they learned geometry, trigonometry before they went on to calculus. Yeah. And when they got to calculus, then they could start experimenting. So, and you have a very similar background in that regard. Well, I guess I, I guess I do. I never really thought of it that way. I think, you know, maybe it, for me, a lot of it came from home brewing. You know, mm -hmm. when, I was, when I was working for Anheuser-Busch, I was home brewing and everything I brewed was extreme because it was my creative outlet, you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, when I did new products at Anheuser-Busch, uh, I got to do some really cool things, but not very much made it out the door as a final beer. When I was in New Hampshire, I was uh, in a homebrew club, a very active member of, of Brew Free or Die homebrew club, and okay. we brewed a lot of extreme beers at my house, and, you know, it was because that's what we wanted to do, you know? Yeah. And uh, the fact that, uh, you know, I think one of the big reasons I even applied for, you know, for the job here at Stone was the fact that I knew how they brewed their beer. Mm -hmm. and really appreciated that.
our local brewery that I think was kind of equivalent on the stone level, Surly. Yeah. And Todd Haug talks about he worked at Summit, which kept him from being Cavalier. Mm -hmm. When he got to Surly, Omar said, what do you want to make? Yeah. You know, tell us what you want to make. That's what we're going to make. We're going to make beers that aren't being made in this market. Um, but now, you know, I can see their growth and they're just growing at an incredible clip. Demand is huge. You guys are growing at an inc incredible clip. The demand is huge. It seems like creativity is now the new challenge. It's very challenging. You know, I mean, brewing, brewing beer consistently is, is huge, obviously. You know, mm -hmm. the, the core brands that we brew, we need, we need to make sure that when people buy them, they know what they're going to get. Right. And if they like our beers, we want them to continue liking them and enjoying them. Right. Sometimes, you, you know, you don't get on the creative wagon, you know, yeah. and, and it's hard to jump on it. But I think that's where you start bringing people into the process, you know. Right. You know, and you, you know, we've got we've hired a lot of talented brewers over the past few years. We've got a lot of really good people, and you know, shoot, they're brewing, they're brewing things I'd never dream of brewing. And sure. Some of it works, and some of it doesn't. But you know, right. we can take parts of that, or ideas, or inspirations. Inspirations can come from anywhere. You know, and that's that's what's kind of cool about it. You don't have to sit at a desk and rack your brain to come up with ideas or read a book, you know, about you know about weird ingredients or something like that to come up with something good. You know, it's you can get it from anywhere. This large complex is much more than a brewery. It's also home to Stone's World Bistro and Gardens. The bistro serves top-notch cuisine made with locally grown ingredients and pours Stone and guest beers. The gardens are a nice place for people to gather, surrounded by botanical displays, koi ponds, waterfalls, and big ass rocks. Think of it as Stone Land. You know, Stone really embraces this, this idea of beer playing this larger role. It's not just beer, but it's beer with food. It's not just beer, it's beer with a great atmosphere. And how do you see the brewing process feeding into that? You know, I think it, it, it feeds both ways. I, you know, I, I always like to tell people that I can come out after work and come to the, come to the bistro and there's a beer on tap that I've never had before, hmm. almost every day, you wow. know? And, and that is a great way to experience different beers. We have all the classes, we have the beer, you know, the beer, uh, the historical beer classes in the bistro, uh, you know, beer styles, pairing beers with food, pairing beer with cheese, beer and cigars. Mm -hmm. Beer is a, you know, it's a, it's a great part of somebody's life, you know, of people's yeah. lives, you know, and it, it, it doesn't have to be sitting in a bar and pounding beers and watching a game on TV. It can be something a lot more than that. And that beer tank is double hulled. It's actually got two walls that are separated by just microns of space. And through that very thin space, we pump uh, chilled propylene glycol, and that's how we can keep our ferment at exactly 70 degrees the entire time. And that really helps boost that fermentation rate. So you're talking about three days, maybe, for pale ale. When it comes to Stone's future, there's a lot to talk about. The company has plans for a major expansion at Stoneland, including more space for beer production at the brewery and a hotel across the street. A second World Bistro and Gardens is being built inside this building at the Liberty Station Complex in downtown San Diego. It will include a 10-barrel pilot brewing system. And then there's Stone Farms. Stone rescued the 19-acre farm after its management went out of business. The fields have been revived and join a long list of small-scale growers that supply organic produce to the bistros. It's my goal that a overly commoditized beer being the number one selling beer in the United States someday becomes a confusing, confusing thought to us. Where people get, what? Huh? Really? And they drink freeze-dried vacuum-packed coffee? No, come on. When they get there, this is a choice. And fluffy white bread and pre-wrapped processed cheese slices, that's really, that's what you guys ate? and uh, that that's uh, all those things fast. You'd think that this would be enough to keep Stone busy for a while, but it's not. Possibly the most daunting and exciting of Stone's future prospects is opening another brewery in Europe. You know, I know we're still looking at Bruges, we're looking at Bel uh, Berlin, mm -hmm. um, and I, as far as I know, er, the, both options are still out there, and we're working through some stuff with lawyers in both places. It's really quite amusing, the reaction I get from people when I get in a conversation done and I'm going to be opening a, planning on opening a brewery. You know, the idea of, of 
brewing our beers in a different country and, and starting over basically and trying to get people to taste our beers. And you know, you can see the behind, behind their eyes, you can see they're thinking, um, it doesn't look that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but what he said was about the dumbest thing I've ever heard. He wants to do what? He wants to, oh, an American wants to come over to Europe and brew. And, and, and they just can't get their heads wrapped around it. Europe's a different nut than America, yeah. you know? It's, um, yeah. you know, it's much more uh, uh, entrenched in its beer culture. And, you know, the beer culture there is, is um, not as strong as it used to be, you know, in, in some countries. And, and it's stronger than it used to be in other countries. Now, people, frankly, people like you, who are writers and in the beer industry in one way or another, and they knew, know the true state of things, to, to, their reaction is more of a, well, hallelujah, and when, when are you going to do it? And hurry the hell up. It's not going to be without headaches, but I, I, you know, we're all really excited about it. You know, yeah. it's just, it's uncharted territory. Yeah. You know, how cool is that? How yeah. cool is that to be involved in something like this, you know? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's just amazing. It seems completely appropriate that Stone would be the, the brewery to jump the <laughs> pond. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to San Diego. I hope you guys have a great time while you're here. Let's do this right. Cheers! It was about one year ago that we were at New Glarus talking about breweries that you have to make a pilgrimage to at least once in your life. Check. Cross another one off the list, citizens. Stone. If you take all the things that Stone has to offer as a brewery, this is well worth your time and your money. Brendan, do you have any parting words for our viewers here? Definitely. Enjoy the people, enjoy the beer, enjoy the environment, and good time to all. From a home brewer, from a brewing TV fan, and a stone employee, those are true words. Well put, Brendan. Thank you. I think all that's left to say is uh, all for brew. Brew, brew for, for all. all. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, dudes. It was reckless to start breeding velociraptors here. <laughs> That could come back to bite you in the ass. Literally, huh? Yeah. Take note, Greg Cook. <laughs> <laughs>